In this episode, I'll show you how to get US stock market data from the Alpaca Markets API. There's a few things you need in order to be able to complete this episode. Firstly, you need to have completed the dev environment episode where I show you how to set up your own development environment for building trading bots. The second thing you need is a set of Alpaca API keys. And in an earlier episode that I've linked in the description, I show you how to get them. Finally, you need those API keys in your development environment. And again, I've linked an earlier episode where I show you how to do that. Once you've got those three things set up, let's go get some data. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got our libraries installed. And we do that through our requirements.txt. See that there's requests and TA lib. Here we're going to add a new one, which is called pandas. We'll save that. We'll open up our terminal. that for now, move that down so it's a little bit tidier. And in here, we're just going to install our new library. So pip install tag r requirements.txt. Okay, it's going to download a bunch of stuff. And you can see here we've successfully installed it, which is pretty cool. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to create our very first interface with a capital market. So we're going to call this one alpaca markets dot pi and this is going to act like a little library that we use to do all of our querying and interfacing with the alpaca markets uh, api okay so up here we're going to import a few libraries so we're going to import the os library well, the os library allows us to interface with the system and i'll show you why that's important in a moment i'm going to import requests okay import Anders, okay, and import date. Now what we want to bring is our API keys and our API secret keys into the environment. So we're going to set our set el dot markets API and API secret. So these are the keys that we just set up before. We're going to call this API key is equal to os.getm alpaca api secret equal to os.getm Let's set up our base uh, function for querying the Alpaca Markets API. Now I'm just going to copy and paste this code across from my other function. Now the reason for that is just to save on time for you. So we go here and add it in, then I'll walk you through it. Okay. So what we have here is we're going to put in the URL that we're querying, followed by the parameters that we want. We check to make sure that we've got our API keys. And then there's some header information that you can check in the, AP, in the Alpaca Markets uh, documentation that you need. Then we attempt to get that response. We look at the status code, and then we return the response. So that little function there helps us to query the trading, uh, query Alpaca Markets and get whatever we've queried. Let's keep building. Now we're going to start putting in the function that we need to get the historic candlestick bars from Alpaca Markets. To do that, we're going to head over to here and type in our function to get the historic candlestick data from alpaca.markets. Okay, so what this function is going to do before I get into it is it's going to use the function we just created up here to query Alpaca markets. Now you might be wondering why we're doing it that way. And the answer is two parts. The first thing is uh, I've found that using the Python packages and other packages that are provided by Alpaca markets to be somewhat hit and miss. Some of them are pretty awesome, but some of them are really not that good. However, the raw API is significantly more effective in my experience. 
It's really well documented. You can try it live on their site. Like it just works so much better. As a result, I decided for all of my trading bots to build it, focusing mainly on using the raw API. And that's what we're going to use. Now, what that means is that that first function that we created is responsible for interfacing with that raw API. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste some of this code across. And the only reason I do that is because uh, it stops me from making mistakes while I'm doing this uh, on a video. Um, I do live coding sessions every now and again. So if you ever want to get involved in them, just let me know um, and I'll be able to send you the link. I'm planning on moving it to YouTube in the near future. Okay, and I'll just grab the actual function name here. Put that one in. And I'll move that forward so that it's correctly indented. All of that can come back one thing. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see the code for you and I'll get rid of this little sidebar. Okay, so let me just zoom in. Let's walk through the function a little bit. And all of this code is on my public repo, which is in the links in the description. So you'll be able to see it for yourself if you want to inspect it. So here's the function, define get historic bars. And we pass into it several variables. The first one is our symbols list. Then we pass in the time frame that we want to look at, the limit of the candles in case we want to go over our count limit, the start date, which needs to be in a date time, and then the end date, which is also a date time. And from there, we want to output a pandas data frame, which we talked about a little bit earlier. You can see here, I've thoroughly commented my code, bit of a pet thing for me. Um, I always call this out in all of my coding videos, commenting your code makes life so much easier in the future uh, when you want to go back and look at why you made decisions to get to where you got to. Now we're going to talk about some really, really straightforward error handling. And this is quite important. So here, we look at some of the common er errors that happen when you're building a trading bot and it gets more complex and you're starting to pass things around to do different things. Some of the really common errors that I've come across when building trading bots are things like the start date and the end date not being date time objects, which messes up uh, your ability to call the Alpaca API. Then we have some pretty funny ones. So if the end date is in the future, that's obviously not really going to work too well. It'd be good if we knew where the market was moving <laughs> in the future, but unfortunately that's not real life. And then another really common one is where you accidentally put the start date before the end date. After that, we join all of our symbols that we want to query together. We make sure that these are all in the right format. We construct our request that heads through to the API. We set our API endpoint here, and then we send that query off to the function that we just created earlier, um, and we raise an exception if it doesn't work. Then we <clears throat> get our response, we convert it into a data frame, we convert these column names, which is what you get back from the API into human friendly ones. So for instead of O, we have candle open, instead of H, we have candle high, followed by turning that into the data frame that we created earlier. And then we return the data frame. So a pretty big function and it does a lot of stuff. So with this, you can actually get pretty much any stock on the US stock market. We're going to connect what we've just done in our Alpaca file to the rest of our trading bot. So we're going to retrieve some data from Alpaca markets. You can see down here what we're aiming to get to. So here's how we go about doing it. I'll just clear this terminal. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is create our file and we're going to create something called app.py. And the purpose of this file is to enable our trading bot to um, work when we push play. So the idea being that when you push play, on the file, it'll go ahead and open up the trading bot for you and get going with whatever algorithm indicators or whatever you've put in there. To do that, we put in a little function, which is if double underscore name is equal to main. Okay. And we want to auto run trading bot. Okay, now if I was to push play here, it's not going to work. And the reason for that is I've defined a function to do something after it uh, runs the file, but I haven't actually told it <laughs> anything about that function. So we'll go and add that in now. And then I'll walk you through it before we push play and I'll show you how it works. Okay, 
and let's go up to the top. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing that we do is we import our alpaca markets in, <clears throat> into there. So that imports the library we just created into our main function. And then we add the date time. The purpose of the date time is so that we can define our start and our end dates. Now we define some variables that we want to pass into our trading bot. For instance, the symbols that we want to analyze, the number of candles we want to collect, and the time frame that we want to analyze. Then we get into the auto run trading bot function. First of all, we print ourselves a little welcome message, and then we set our end date and our start date. Now, for those of you who are looking to get into high frequency trading, I just want to point out this little thing here. You'll see here that I've minus one day from our start date. The reason for this is that the free version of the Alpaca API, which is what you probably would have signed up for, delays the latest data that you can get from it. In the documentation, it talks about a 30 minute delay, but in my experimentation with it, I found that that can vary. To get around it and make sure that this works, I've really just set this to be one whole day. Obviously, if you want to trade something like the 5 minute, the 15 minute, the 30 minute candlestick, it's not really ideal, so you may need to consider getting their full tier. Once we've defined our end and our start date, we continue on. Now what we're going to do is iterate over the different symbols in there. There's different ways that we could do this. For instance, we could get all of the symbols all at once. And in fact, for Trade Oxy, where we analyze 10,000 or more stocks all at once, we do use a different method. However, for what I wanted to show you today, I thought this would be the simplest one to work through because it allows you to kind of see it in action. So we iterate through each symbol. Right now we've only got one. And then we go through and we get the historic data for the symbol. Then we print it. Now let's push play and see if this works. I'll just get rid of my double main function there for you. Okay, and we'll push play. Let's see what happens. Great, it worked. So you can see here, and I'll pull this up so you can see it. We printed our welcome message, and now we have all of the information that we might want about it. Now, in a sneak peek for what's coming up in the rest of the series, I want to show you one of the reasons why I think trading bots are amazing. For instance, getting that data for one stock is not really that impressive. I mean, let's be honest, whether you're using TradingView or um, MetaTrader or any of the other thousands of different stock trading programs out there, getting all of that information for one stock is super simple. I mean, you literally can just open up a screen and get it. But what happens if you wanted to get the magnificent, you know, 10 stocks that you've always wanted to get? So we could say Google, maybe you want some Amazon in there, some Tesla if you're a Tesla fan. Uh, I don't know what else we could get. Snap. Okay, Twitter doesn't exist anymore. Netflix might be a good one. Okay, now we've suddenly got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different stocks, and we want to analyze them all at once. Now, if you were using something like TradingView, that would be a little bit of a mess, I'm not going to lie. It'd take you a few minutes for sure. But have a look at what happens here. Now we get our trading bot. Holy moly. Look at all these things. We've got Snap, Tesla, Netflix, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple. I mean, it literally took about 15 seconds to analyze all of those. And imagine that you are also adding indicators, your own trading algorithms, like you can hyperscale your analysis and decision making really easy with trading bots. And that's why I love them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. And in the next episode, I'm going to start showing you how to build some different indicators into what you're doing. I'll see you there.